Hey guys, it's Celestia. I know I'm late yet again, but I swear things will calm down soon and I'll get back into a proper schedule. This video is actually late because today's art just took forever. Uh, but it's actually something I've been meaning to make for ages now since I first saw the idea on Instagram. It's called Small Business Boulevard, which is a hashtag where you essentially create a physical storefront for your digital store so that even during the pandemic, people can still browse the tag and sort of window shop through small businesses like it's a mall. Today's piece was partially inspired by that and partially for a virtual convention I'm doing uh, the Artist Alley at this month because I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a visual rather than just a store link, you know? Anyway, I really, really enjoyed making it because having a real in-person store someday is 100% one of my dreams and mapping out the dream exterior combined with my normal Artist Alley table setup and my mascot just made me really happy. It's a nice thing to imagine and visualize and honestly, I would really recommend this little challenge to any artist that has a similar dream or even just wants to enjoy conceptualizing a cute little store just for fun. Anyway, I could easily go on about that forever, so before I give myself the chance to, let's move on to today's actual topic, which you guys voted for a few weeks ago before I decided to go off about my big faves in my last video, and that is five ways to stay productive as an artist. And let me just say in advance that while the majority of these tips are more targeted towards professional artists who are making art for a living, they're applicable to anyone who wants to take art more seriously or efficiently or consistently or whatever. They might not work for everyone, but they've certainly helped me, so hopefully you guys will get some use out of them too. The first tip is to organize your projects. As an artist, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by inspiration at times. Like, you feel like there are a million things you want to make and you don't know where to start and you just end up losing track of half the things that you wanted to draw, or feeling like there's just too much and stopping before you start at all. For example, I started playing Genshin Impact recently and immediately wanted to draw like 15 people and places and things, and by the time I stopped playing, I remembered maybe five of those ideas because there were just so many. It's just too good of a game, okay? Just look at Paimon and tell me you don't want to draw her. Anyway, on the more professional end of things too, sometimes you have commissions or work projects that have to take precedence over personal inspirations, which can lead you to forget those inspirations and things that you wanted to make because you just don't have time to work on them yet. The obvious solution here is to make a list. For me, I have a section of my bullet journal dedicated to just art inspiration, plans, and future projects. But even if it's just a messy little notebook where you quickly jot down your ideas and goals, it keeps you on track towards actually getting those things done. Personally, I prefer to separate my lists by things that I want to make professionally, like videos, zines, and merch, and things that I want to just draw for me, like Paimon. <laughs> I also like to prioritize those ideas by order of how much I want to make them or how urgently I want to make them. You don't have to be that detailed about it, but it's really difficult to stay productive without a clear idea of exactly what you want to get done productively. And that brings me to my next tip, which is closely related, and that's to break big projects down into small tasks. If you've made a big list of projects that you want to make, it can make you feel more organized, but it can also feel really daunting. Like, there's so much to do that you don't know where to start. I've mentioned this before in my burnout video, but I'm mentioning it again because it honestly makes all the difference in both situations. Map out all of the smaller tasks that you need to get done in order to finish the big thing. It makes the big thing feel more achievable, it gives you a ballpark estimate of an end date so that you can manage your time accordingly and also feel less like it'll never get done. And it'll make you feel like you accomplished something whenever you knock off one of those small tasks, even when the big thing isn't done yet. But let's say you don't have big projects planned and you're just trying to be more productive about your everyday art. It's still very important, at least in my opinion, to break what you want to accomplish down into achievable short-term goals. Art can be a very nebulous thing when it comes to productivity because it's not concrete like something more straightforward. For example, it's easy to set a reading goal based on pages or a studying goal based on points, but unless you break your art down into steps in a similar way, it can feel a lot more vague. You can feel as productive after finishing line art as you can after finishing the majority of a piece, just based on your mood, the time you spent on it, the piece's complexity how happy you are with it. It can just be really hard to be objective about how productive you actually were without having those goals set in advance. Even when I'm just working on one piece or several rather than a whole project. I make a list of daily work goals every morning in order to make my productivity measurable with tasks rather than how I feel about it or an undefined sense of how much I want to finish. If it's a complicated piece, I'll plan to finish the sketch and the line art. If it's a simple one, I'll plan to finish the whole thing. It's just very helpful to tailor your goals to what you're working on and know exactly what you need to get done in a day. The third tip falls under the same umbrella of organization, and it's to schedule your work. As I mentioned, different pieces will take different amounts of time, so it can be easy to either overwork yourself or do too little based on what needs to be done. 
The best way I know to achieve and maintain productivity with art is to treat it like a 9 to 5 job, even if it isn't something that you're doing professionally. Give yourself concrete hours and try to stick to them. It establishes a routine and it ensures that you get a consistent amount of work done even when the work that you're doing is, in and of itself, inconsistent. Having a routine for your art makes it easier and easier to fall into healthy, productive habits. And the longer you maintain it, the more naturally that productivity will come to you and the less effort it'll take. Similarly, it's also helpful to give yourself deadlines for projects that don't actually require deadlines. Time management is a huge part of productivity, and long-term goals for your art are just as important as the short-term ones. Especially because it's easy to lose track of the time that you're spending on certain things if you don't have a larger window of time established within which to finish them all. It also builds good habits for you if you do want to pursue art professionally and aren't already doing so. Because the more accustomed you are to finishing projects or pieces within established time frames, the easier it'll be for you to do so in a professional environment when you do have actual deadlines to meet. Another small sub-tip on that note. If you want to give yourself the most reasonable deadlines possible, it can be really handy to keep track of how long certain aspects of your art take you. Paying attention to how long you spend on the sketch, on the line art, on the color, on the background, all of that will allow you to more accurately estimate the time it'll take you to finish a whole piece and how long you should give yourself to complete each part. It also comes with the added bonus of helping you price commissions, which is unrelated but was hugely helpful for me personally, because you can price different commissions differently based on the time it takes you to complete them. Also on the topic of time management, something I've had a lot of people recommend to me, both artists and not artists, is the Pomodoro Technique. It's essentially just focused working without any distractions for 25 minutes, and then a 5 minute break, and then repeating that cycle as many times as you need. It's something I'm still trying out myself, but I've definitely found that I'm more conscious of how long certain things take me, how hyper-focused I can get on what I'm doing and subsequently losing track of time, uh, how distracted I can get by social media, texts, and other distractions as well. All of those things are really helpful to know when planning and scheduling my time, even when I'm not using the technique. And I've also found that the amount of work I get done, well, not watching anything or checking my phone at all for 25 straight minutes is way more significant. You don't really consider how much those seconds and minutes of distractions actually add up in your day until it's a part of your schedule. And even when you're not giving art your total focus as the technique suggests, it still makes you more conscious about how you spend your time and can help you be more productive on a regular basis as well. The fourth tip is to set reasonable goals and expectations for yourself with all of these things in mind. Let's say you've really gotten to know yourself and your habits, you know how long certain aspects of your art take you, you know the things you need to get done, you know how distractions affect you, you're a hyper-aware art-making machine. You can and should use this knowledge to try to keep yourself from expecting too much or little of yourself. I often find myself looking at my long-term goals and thinking, I could probably get these done faster even if I don't have to, and then actually getting it done faster, and then setting shorter and shorter deadlines because, hey, it worked the first time. And, I mean, that is also part of growing as an artist, sure, like, once you improve, it doesn't take you as long to draw certain things, and subsequently the deadlines you give yourself become shorter. But I guess what I'm saying is that it's a thin line between growing and changing your expectations accordingly, and ignoring your limits because you think you're pursuing more productivity and efficiency which can spiral into burnout that really does the opposite. Conversely, if you underestimate yourself or just set too low of expectations for yourself in general, your productivity will suffer as a result just as much. Trying to stay introspective and self-aware can keep you balanced in the middle, which is, in my experience, the most sustainable way to stay productive. That same introspection can also help you identify your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to productivity. You can find the things that make you super motivated and inspired, things that really help you stay on track, habits that help you keep a routine, and you can tailor your work ethic to put a focus on those things. You can also isolate the things that distract you the most, make you lose motivation, and either work on how you respond to those things or try to minimize their presence in your life. Last note regarding this tip, you should also try to remind yourself that as an artist, you're always going to be harder on yourself than you would be on others, criticize your own art more than you would that of others, and set a higher standard for yourself than you would for others. Productivity doesn't need to mean trying to make all of your art perfect all the time. It just means doing your best with as much consistency as you can manage. Number five, the final tip, is to keep drawing. Taking breaks is important, but taking short, organized breaks is, in my opinion, the productive way to do it. Taking really long, irregular breaks where you don't draw at all, it makes it really hard to get back into a consistent and effective work routine with your art. 
The most important part of staying productive as an artist, for me at least, is to keep up what you're doing regularly and build it into a habit. It gets easier and easier the longer you do it, and once you've built these healthy art habits, productivity can feel genuinely effortless. But because the benefit to it is a direct result of how regularly you do it, not doing it for a long period of time can pretty significantly inhibit your productivity once you're ready to start back up. It's a lot easier to keep making art than it is to start making it again. It's like momentum, especially when you lose touch with your inspiration. Personally, when I'm feeling tired and like I can't keep up with the schedule that I've given myself for my art, I keep up the same habits with a lighter workload. I set the same number of tasks to do every day, but easier, smaller tasks. It means less work, which gives me a break, but the same routine and habits, which makes it easier to come back to once my energy is back up to where it needs to be. And there we have my poorly constructed list of stuff, in which I say the words productive and consistent more than any human being should ever do in one video. I did have a thesaurus tab open while scripting this, but none of the words offered gave the right vibe, you know? Anyway, hopefully you guys found this at least a little bit helpful. These are really just some things that work for me, and they might not work for you. Everyone's definition of productivity is different, and everyone achieves it differently. Anyway, one last thing before I end the video. A really talented artist commented on my small creators video, essentially just relating to it in that she's also a small creator, giving her all to what she's making, and struggling to have it be seen. And while I still have a very small audience myself, I wanted to give a shout out to her and her story, because small artists bringing each other up is pretty much the best part of the community and Honestly, her story is legitimately really cool. I would tell you what it's called, but I don't 100% know how to pronounce the name and I don't want to botch it, so I'm just going to pull it up on screen here and link you guys to both the story and the artist, Chloe, in the description below. I haven't read it all yet, but from everything I've seen, it's got gorgeous art illustrating the writing, an immersive story, a developed and interesting world with charming characters, and you can feel the amount of love, time, and passion that was put into it. Please consider checking it out if you're into fantasy, fairies, magic, and that kind of vibe, because it really is super engaging and I'm personally looking forward to reading a lot more. Okay, alright, now I'll wrap this up and stop rambling. Temporarily, I mean, because I'm still gonna need you guys to vote on Twitter about what I'm gonna ramble about next week, link in the description, because that's what I do, and hopefully that's what you're here for. Side note before I go as well, you may have noticed the tiny easter egg in today's art and wonder what secret sale it's referring to. On February 27th, I'll be exhibiting and selling my art at Icons Winterfest Virtual Artist Alley, and I'll have a special sale for orders made that day. So if you're interested, please keep an eye on my social media for an update. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you feel like making my day, and I'll see you in my next video.